All right, now count us into the audio portion of the show. In three, two, one. All right, welcome to episode 111 of the Narcissistic wow. Music Disorder. Good night, dude. That's pretty impressive. I'm impressed by that. Yeah. I'm impressed by the amount I've, you know, I do always kind of watch like, and I know you do too, you must like new podcasts that come out or who's doing it or what's happening. Dude, there's a lot of them. I, I, I really appreciate that people listen to this and, and watch it and everything. Cause there's a, every time you turn around, somebody's got a podcast about something. Yeah. So there's I something mean, something about, yeah, every subject pretty much, which is cool. I mean, I think that's cool. But I also think even in our time, we've definitely seen come some come and go, right? I mean, we've yeah. I'm gonna turn my it's hard, up. dude. What of did course. Denny, Denny said to us last week? I don't know how you guys do it every show, every show, every other week. And I don't believe knock on wood. Hang on. <laughs> um, I, I I we haven't missed our schedule, our biweekly schedule. We've been no. we've never missed. Praise God and and let's hope that keeps going. Even with a broken leg and and your eyes fell out and all kinds. Oh, that's of stuff. right. That's right. Plus COVID. <laughs> yeah. Plus, so COVID, eyes fall out. <laughs> you you motocross uh, yourself to death. Um, sicknesses, every and we still manage. So hopefully, I was thinking the up. other day about ideas that have sprouted from this show, uh -huh. like um, band names. Johnny oh, and the yeah. Lot Lizards. Uh, plus our um, um, backseat. Scott's Last Wheelie. What's that? Which is still, a, I should write that, that down. Should, that could be like a like a super group or an EP name or something. I like it better for an EP name. Or well, a final was, EP. A final, well, a this, farewell EP. I had this thing that I, that I was thinking about when I was laying in the hospital with a broken leg. How, like, at a veteran's home, it would be cool to, like, I have so much music to like go to a veteran's home and hang out with the, if the guys wanted to come hang out and listen to tunes that they might not have access to. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Or like, you know, a couple times a month or something like that for a few hours, just whatever. Cause I have so many genres. I think that'd be cool to, to talk about the songs <laughs> or whatever. Well, and, and that is cool. That sounds really cool actually. And um, the other thing is too, I think what someone should do and, 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 you know, I'm an idea guy. I'm not really a follow through guy, <laughs> but what I think somebody should do is you remember like back in the day, Alan Lomax did those recordings in like the Appalachian Hills where the original, like pretty Polly and, um, um, what is the other song? Um, moonshiner, all those, uh, some of those uncle Tupelo covers from yeah. that, that, Anyhow, someone should go do field recordings in nursing homes and just have people tell their story. Oh, I think, um, you know, one of my jazz heroes, Benny Golson, is I think he's in a nursing home in like Philly somewhere. And he's in his <laughs> late 90s. Right. So you go in with a mic, you just set it down and you go, hey, tell uh, me about your life. I would love to go hang out with him. Well, That'd I bet you could killer. You'd have access, more access than maybe you would think. It'd be hard to find probably whomever was in charge of that person you know that person's care or whatever but if you did i mean think about he, benny golson's not really like a, a household name so and like a you know a, right a, but i mean just to like a get coltrane at, you know or something that plays right. sax but so there's a lot of people there that probably don't even know who he's like a he's like the dude in crossroads <laughs> people right didn't right, really know right. who he was willie like willie, willie. Blind right, Willie, what's that his name? Yeah, it was name? Blind Willie. Uh, uh, Willie Johnson? Well, they call me Willie, call me Willie. Willie Brown. Willie, Willie Brown. Brown, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, You got that money roll? It's on my <laughs> hip right next to my whip where it's been. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gold. Yeah, anyhow, that's so uh, since we're so far off topic already, I might as well add. Are you familiar with the Killer Blues Headstone Project? Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah. Steve Salter. Yes. Yeah. So I know Steve. I go way back with Steve. Um, I've met him a couple oh, times at the yeah. tip top. Yeah. So Steve, I actually, you know, played at his uh, wedding anniversary. He was best friends with my friend Stein Krantzer, who I played in a band with, who passed away. So anyhow, 
it's that same idea, like the headstone project, but this field recordings of these people's stories who are still alive. Anyhow, yeah. don't rip. Please don't rip off that idea, people. And please don't rip Your off book. my book idea. Please. The um, please. I promise to get started. I think the point. reason that I first heard about Steve Salter and his blues project was because um, I want to say there's a blues piano guy that I love named Otis Spann. And I want to say he got him a gravestone or something like that. Dude, he's done a ton of that. It's it's truly amazing so, work. And, and, and something, he is a, something to do with Otis Spann, I think. Or maybe his wife or something to do yeah. with Otis Steve Spann is, a, is what got my attention. Because I'm a Steve big fan. Steve is the best fan, the bre- best friend the blues ever had is Steve. I swear to God. I love him. So anyhow, uh, we have now, uh, we you know, kick things off with a little visiting. So let's uh, let's dive into today's topic, which is for fans of music and for songwriters. This is pretty fertile fields. <laughs> it's also some I think I heard Jason Isbell. I think he said he avoids the topic. Yeah. So what's the topic today? Songs about rain. So there's an album by a band called Songs About Rain, I think. There's a song. Well, Gary Allen has that song. Um, the radio just keeps on playing all these songs about rain. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But I feel like there's an album called. So- then again, wasn't wasn't there a not Maroon Five album called Songs About Jane? Maybe I'm thinking of that. Songs about Jane or so- something. Yeah, that something effect. like that. Songs about being shirtless. I remember you like terrible music, so I bought you this Maroon Five CD. <laughs> that's cool oh man. that's, that's cold. so thoughtful <laughs> so thoughtful man all right so we're diving into songs about rain i found some good ones um i don't know man some of them i think i don't know if we'll double up or not um i feel like we might i tried to do songs Doubtful. that i regular that are i well i tried to do songs i regularly listen to me too i've i've got maybe one yeah, I've got one that I don't regularly listen to, but I love the song. Um, so let's dive in. What's your My first, first one? one is from a local guy, Jake Kershaw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blues called Sitting in the Rain. Oh, really? Yeah, it's great. It's um, he says, uh, as I sit here waiting, waiting for my one love, raindrops fall and give my heart a shove. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, so he it's... was like, um. That's, I think it's his first record. I think he was like probably 17 years old or something. Sorry, I'm rolling on a cable. <laughs> um, but yeah, he um, uh, he was like a record. prodigy. He was like a prodigy. And still, I mean, he's still, he always, for me, for some reason, he reminded me of uh, kind of the, I don't know, trajectory, for lack of a better word, or image. Maybe it's the way he looked of like um, a young Joe Bonamassa or something. You know, he kind of reminded me of that young blues kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's I've met him. Young Jake. I've met him one time, I think. And we were both playing like Walk the Beat somewhere. One of those in Grand Haven, maybe. Oh, OK. And yeah. they had a after party that I poked my head in and Jake was there and we talked amps for a hot second. And that was it. And he seemed like a really sweet kid. So, yeah, cool. it's a killer record. That whole Good, record's man. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's cool. I think it came um, out in 2017. God, really? That long? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's still playing. He'll, he's getting yeah. in and recording and doing his thing. And he's super, uh, seems like a sweet, sweet young man. So I'm I'm definitely in his corner. He could probably, he's got the chops where he could probably be a dick, but he doesn't seem to be. It's a um, killer I, I'm going to start off my uh, rain list with a song that both you and I have professed a love for and believe it or not dude i'm on my way home from work the other day and heard this song on the radio which blew my mind um it's louisiana rain by tom petty and heartbreakers on um on damn the torpedoes probably one of the coolest songs on damn the torpedoes absolutely um last track right the last track it's got all the studio stuff in the start of it and and it, it, there's something about it musically I like. It starts on a bend. Bow, 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 bow. That's how it kicks in, and that's really cool. And um, I have to remember, there's a damn uh, um, classic albums on Damn the Torpedoes. Yes. Uh, about Damn the Torpedoes. I, I don't remember. They must, obviously. They must talk about the song. I, I'm going to have to rewatch it and see just how deep into that 
because I know they spend a lot of time on Refugee because they recorded like 78 versions of that. And of course, the big are, hits are a bunch of those on YouTube. Those yes. Behind the album. Classic album series. Yeah, yeah. Classic albums where they sit at the board. and Right. Because they do L.A. That. Woman, I think. Yeah, dude, they and do. I think um, they do the first doors. They do Steely Dan Asia. They do. Um, They do. For me, I've seen Def Leppard, uh, Hysteria. Uh, Damn the Torpedoes, British Steel by Judas Priest. The cool thing, here's a side story. The Judas Priest one, the song Metal Gods has this like, it's like, and you hear like this metal sound, which sounds like this big metal robot walking. And it, uh, Halford said it was him with a microphone picking up a tray of silverware and dropping it. Oh. <laughs> and that's what it was. So that's, that's series. If you, um, listener, if you, um, if you're not watching that classic album series, you'll love it. It's so cool. And uh, yeah, I'm sure the the Damn the Torpedoes one will cover Louisiana Rain, which is, it's not my favorite song on Damn the Torpedoes, but it's awful close. It's awful close. So it's what do you got next? five petty song for me, probably. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. What's next? I have um, Tom T. Hall, Shame on the Rain. From the album The Ballad of Forty Dollars, his very first record. Um, which also I feel like contains I know the song. You don't know the song Shame on the Rain? I, I'm I'm thinking, I'm sure um, I do. Um as no, I no, sit I here it. wait or, or uh Shame on the Rain for making me twice as blue. It's raining in my heart and on my window too. Oh yeah. I mean <laughs> Tom Pain, Tom T. Hall. Yeah. Dude, that record's got the ballad of forty dollars, the song about the dude that owes him forty bucks, but he's dead, and which is a true story because he was a grave digger before he became a singer. That doesn't have um. It's got that doesn't that's have how I got to Memphis on it. That's my favorite Tom Tom T. It's Hall my song. favorite all time favorite country song. It doesn't have um. Do you know the Tom T. Hall song "Pay No Attention to Alice"? Yeah, that's on a later record from the seventies. Uh, I okay. can't. Remember I love that one, song, but. Yeah, this record's song. from like 60, 69, I think. Okay. It's very first. It's the Ballad of Forty Dollars. Um, it's a well, great you know, that's, record. But that's I love my first Tom concert. T. I mean, my all time favorite. Concert. Uh, my all time favorite country artist because I like damn near every single record and just yeah, and plus yeah, he... my 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 friend may he rest in peace Peter Cooper was a huge Tom T fan and. Actually got to be friends with him, which is awesome. Tom T. Hall was big when I was a kid, man. Yeah, dude, he was he, huge. My huge. dad had so many eight tracks, and so did yeah, my dad. That's I mean, how I, I got the into story. Him. Yeah, yeah. My dad's band uh, backed him back then when the the singer oh, dude right. would, would come with just himself, like Chuck Berry does. You know, Chuck Berry doesn't have a band; he just picks one up in the town. Oh, like, okay. So if I guess I don't know how it works to be a hundred percent honest with you, but I know that like. If Chuck Berry's coming to town, he would take your hot local regional band and they would be his backing band. Okay. And Tom T. Hall did that. That's what happened at the Elsie Walker Arena is the old man's band was his backing band and then did their own set. Like they opened and then they just stay up. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then they, which is cool. I'd love to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So. Tom T. Hall, um, mine, that, yeah, I don't know if you're going to make fun of me. I feel like you're going to make fun of me. I feel like you're going to get all judgy like you like to when I pick a song like this and say, have some snarky comment that makes me feel bad about myself. I picked No Rain by Blind Melon. Oh, beautiful. You like Blind Melon? I feel I, like you. Dude, I saw him at Club Eastbrook um, and I, I have a single of No Rain with a recording from that show on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it a like, live um... version of the song? deserted or uh paper scratcher it's one of those okay but it's what's your favorite from, blind before it was from, the orbit room it was called club eastbrook. eastbrook yeah what's your I favorite blind melon song? song what's that my favorite what? is time is that the one or um change change no. there you go yeah change that's a good there's one on, i love that tune i don't I like, feel the sun's coming out today it's staying in cover that's of good. um the pusher's awesome too. Oh, I've never heard that. I think is they it did a, it. Like I, it I don't know if it was on it? that record with Galaxy or if oh. it was on a soundtrack or something, but it, you can find it on YouTube. 
I'll check it out because I love that song. And I was in a band that covered that song for a hot second. Um, I like um change. This is a yes. change. The song you mentioned, but there was another one I like too. Um, tones I mean, of Holy home. Man's great. I um, like everything off. I only dude, I only had that the B album. That's all I had. It was okay, my I had first the CD. second one with like two by four and galaxy and galaxy. Uh, I remember was a single. And stuff like that. Yeah. The, um, that's the first CD that I, I have owned. a DVD too. That's called, um, letters from a porcupine. It's sort of like the Val Kilmer thing because Shannon was always with a video camera right. too. Right. And that's I gotta a cool documentary. That. I like, I, 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 Thought that was a cool band. I really did. Yeah. Uh, what, very do you, cool. what do you got next? Uh, from the band The Move, a song called Flowers in the Rain. <laughs> now that the, I know, I don't know. Those guys were active from like 66 to 72, I think. Yeah. Sort of Beatley, Kinks, um, Roy Wood. Someone Ward, famous think, was, was in that band. Well, they went on to be ELO. ELO. Yeah, okay. Um, I knew. In like 71, I think, something like that. But yeah, they had a song called Flowers in the Rain that he wrote about watching his garden grow. Huh. It's a cool, cool like, you know, beatly, kinksy type of catchy song. Ooh, I like that. It's from, I have, uh, the only other person I know that likes the move is Drew Phillips, our guest from a couple oh, yeah. episodes ago. I have an anthology that's four discs. That's it's the only thing I have from the move. Is California Man originally by the move? I think that's on there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a California. Of course, I know it through Cheap Trick, but um, I think that's a move tune too. I'll have to. I'll yeah, have to there. That. You can hear Cheap Trick, and you can de definitely tell that they were probably into the move. But yeah, they're yeah. they're that I, era sound. That, that I cool like that Beatles yep. kink sound. Well, then I'm gonna go to my um my next pick uh, that you've so graciously led me into it's the song rain by the beatles yes when the rain comes so you mentioned dragon yeah is it on revolver or uh it's on revolver no rubber soul one of those i think it's on rubber soul it's not on revolver okay um is it i don't know miller and it's i later. cover it it's a, a killer tune it's got cool vocal harmonies it's got one of the best one of mccartney's best bass lines ever is the bass line to rain. It's so cool, man. Is and, there a rain it, effect in that song, if, if I remember, or not? I don't, I don't remember. I don't think so. No. When the rain comes running, when the rain comes running. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely some backwards stuff in there. There's some backwards vocal in there toward the end, I think. Um, and it's just cool because the if you listen to it, it really is McCartney at his best, his busiest bass playing. It, his bass, McCartney's bass playing on Rain reminds me of the way Mitch Wood plays bass. Mitch Wood oh. plays bass like Paul McCartney on Rain. Busy, but cool and melodic. And yeah. So was, speaking of Mitch song. Wood, I was just jamming the song Aaron Gordon last night. That's a Mitch Wood. That's um, for me. It, that's that's not his signature tune for me because in the Duchesne's, he had a song. I don't think they really. They released it maybe on a cassette called Bad Starts Looking Better. That is, I thought, one of the best songs he ever wrote. But Aaron Gordon is, everybody loves that song. And that's a real Great dude. Too. It's a real dude. Wow. That dude exists. That's a real person. The whole, all of that song is true. That's crazy to me. Because it's so catchy and funny and all those things. All right. So you're next. What do you got next? I have from two pals uh, that now live in Nashville, Brent Cobb and oh, yeah. Andrew Combs wrote a song called, well, one of them on their album calls it Rainy Day Song, and the other one calls it Shine On Rainy Day. Okay. But Same song. Uh, it's on both of uh, Andrew Combs. It's on his All These Dreams record, and Brent, it's on Shine On Rainy Day record, I believe. So Is Brent Cobb related to Dave Cobb, or is that yes, his cousin? Cousin. Yeah, he's okay. from, they're both from Georgia. I don't know if Brent lives in Nashville. That might not be true. He might live in Georgia still. But okay. Um, yeah, they're buddies and they wrote this song together. They both put it on their records. Leanne Womack also does a cover of it. Um, oh, cool. I think hey, she man. calls it Shine on Rainy Day, but it's a fantastic, well written song. There's a killer version of Andrew doing it um, from the Pace Studios. It's a oh, yeah. 
It's killer. So, hey, did we? Can we take a side street real quick? Something we yeah. haven't talked about, and it's because we I brought up Dave Cobb. Have we talked about Jason Isbell getting divorced? <laughs> Have we talked? We haven't, dude. I... Say it. Say what you want to say. I see it. Get I'm it becoming out. less and less of a fan of Jason Isbell as a person. You it's know, getting it's getting hard to even listen because it's like our, he's it's I think he's hearing all this and it's getting to him. Dude, he is not listen. Let's just say this and and this could be our NMD. It breaks my heart. Too. But this could be our NMD. He's getting so big that guys like us will start pulling away a little bit. But well, it's what we do. Right, right. That's part of our disorder. But I'm telling you, he is not the dude that wrote Outfit. He's not the dude who wrote TVA. He's not the dude who wrote any of those truckers tunes. And I think it's because he, number one, he is not that guy anymore, right? I mean, we know no. that. But I also think like something started feeding it. And he started. Uh, there's something. Jimbo Hart is gone. There's something going on. You, you, this is terrible to say. And I hope this is. not Number one. Amanda Shires, his wife, she something about her bothered me a little bit. I don't know what it is, dude. I don't know what it is. Um, something bothered me about her. But I wonder, dude, there's a this much of me, this teeny tiny part of me worried for a second when Jimbo actually it was when Jimbo left. I wondered if he didn't start drinking again. I yeah. I hope not. And and I'm sure that's not the case. And like I said, I, I was not an Amanda Shires fan. Anyhow, um, I mean, I like what she did, but she just, she seems like a strong woman. I like her on that level. There was something that was bugging me, but I just wondered if we, we hadn't discussed that. No. I also wonder, so that they must have someone else already for the 400 unit as a, um, a, a violinist. bass player. They must. Well, I think it's a player. female and, bass player. I think she's been with him for a little while. I don't oh, know good. her name. I'll have to check it out. I'm going to watch some videos. But I I'm saw sure her. Right. I watched him on like um, Letterman or one of those, not Letterman, but he's done. But one of those late shows uh, recently, they did an, a song, maybe King of Oklahoma or one of those, but, and she was playing with him. So, okay. The, yeah. The I, female I, bass player. I don't know. And again, because I was like, oh, where's Jimbo? And I didn't know that he was gone because I, I don't know. I don't just keep up with my wife really does. She follows a Jason Isbell fan page. And yeah, I, he kind of, I will say this <laughs> and, and you'll laugh at this. My last Jason Isbell record is the Nashville sound. That's the last one. I well, bought I got I didn't... the new one reunions and I like some of it. I may some have of it. reunions dude, but there was that other one. What there's a newer one than that, that weather vein. No weather veins. That's the new one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's I the don't... one. That's the Anyhow. new one. I like some of Weather Vane's. Um, some of it's there too was, political. There was one album I really backed away from. I don't remember what it was. Reunions. And actually, maybe that was it. It was almost yeah, too mellow. I didn't care. For that me. was the yeah. kind of the one that they made the documentary that, yeah, I, I think mm. that got started the divorce whole thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he, you know, separated so much, from, went into the writing so much that he just shut everyone out. Dude, and that documentary comes into the studio. He was staying at a hotel the night before. Yeah. And he's home. So, anyway, so I mean, the, doc the documentary, uh, if you saw it, you you weren't shocked when you heard about the. Debate. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. And I, I like I said, I, I had a little concern about his sobriety. It's not my business. He's Jason Isbell. I, I will say this, though that part of that documentary where they do the private party and he's all coked up and drunk. He's a mess, dude. He does not. I mean, I'm not a fun guy to be around all coked up and drunk either, but that dude doesn't really strike me as a fun guy to spend time with when he's loaded. I bet he's an asshole. Yeah. I depend on what I drank, but I could be too. Jeez, I'm a, dude, I've <laughs> had two cups of coffee and I'm an asshole. So it doesn't. Matter. <laughs> all right. What do you, uh, let me think we, I did Beatles rain. We got really sidetracked. You had the Andrew I had Combs, Andrew Combs and slash Brent, Brent Cobb. Cobb tune. All right, I'm moving on then. Yeah. I'm going to, this is a jam. I can hear this right now in the car as a kid. I love it right now. You can fight me about it if you'd like. Rainy days and Mondays. 
Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Yeah. By the Carpenters. Who sang it. Carpenters. Oh. It's yes. Carpenters tune. Um, at least I think it is. Yes, it's definitely the Carpenters. I love that tune, man. It was a great and it it's really like, I mean, poignant might be too strong of a word, but it does kind of encapsulate that idea. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. I yeah. mean, that's kind of pretty good, man. And it was another one of those 70s songs. I'll put it in there with um for me growing up um starland vocal land afternoon delight was always on the radio rainy yep. days and mondays was on the radio a lot um you know the other tune that i really 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 love that was on the radio a lot when i was a kid is um seasons in the sun oh terry jacks. by terry jacks yeah <laughs> i love that song um but yeah rainy days and mondays i think that's a great song with with rain in it of course and and a classic too classic too what do you got next uh, this is while well, we talked. I said we won't have a match, but this one might be, um, but maybe not the version I'm going with. But John Sykes crying in the rain from Bad Boy oh, Live. Oh, I don't have that. No, but that's a great tune, dude. It's a, I mean, Coverdale wrote the song, but John Sykes does it on Bad Boy Live, which came out in like 2010, I want to say. It's really the last thing that he's put out. Can we, though? I mean, it was on the um, was it on the eighty seven album, the eighty seven White Snake album? Yeah. Yes. Um, Coverdale sings, dude. So David Coverdale has, I think we can kind of agree. I mean, I don't know how old he is, seventies, probably right? early. Yeah. So let's back off and just yes, he's not singing "Still of the Night" like he of did in eighty seven, but that dude just seems to be all pro all the time. He seems he's like an English gentleman. Every guitar player from Vi to um, Vandenberg to Age. all those guys, they all talk about David Coverdale as being a gentleman, like he runs his life in a distinguished manner. And I like that about David Coverdale. But he sings the snot out of Crying in the Rain on um, on that 87 album. Yeah. It's really good. And they also, I'm trying to think of what tune they used to kick that set off with when I saw him in 87. Bad Boys, maybe. Bad Boys is from that yeah, record. They yeah. would kick off. And Likes they does just that so on this record, that too. That was so good. And that, of course, I saw the 87 lineup. So it was Vivian Campbell and, and Adrian Vandenberg. And Adrian Vandenberg's humping a new album right now. He's got a new record out. And, um, you know, the classic video lineup, Rudy Sarzo, Tommy Eldridge. But they were, I mean, they toured most of 87. They were on the road with, they were opening the uh, Girls, Girls, Girls tour for Motley Crue. Oh, okay. And of course, the Motley guys, even in, I think in the dirt, like Nikki or Tommy's, like eh, these guys, like one of the guitar players named Vivian, like he didn't know who Vivian Campbell was. Vivian Campbell had been in Dio before Motley. I mean, yeah, Motley right. had two, but you knew who Vivian kept. So he kind of dismissively, one of the guys, I think his name was Vivian, something stupid like that. But he's like, he went back to his room to practice guitar, like when they were going out to do blow or rape somebody or whatever. Something they should have been do. doing. <laughs> Something they should have been doing. You know, yeah, maybe Nikki could take a bass lesson. But um, I my guess is, and I didn't see the Girls, Girls, Girls tour in 87. My guess is, I'll bet you White Snake sounded like a professional band and Motley Crue sounded like a high school band. Yeah, guaranteed. There's just better... There's there's just a, a deeper deeper roots in Coverdale, I think, that bluesier roots. I, and I'm always gonna love Motley Crue. You know that. I'll always love Motley Crue, but I still think uh I still think a lot of um of White Snake. And of course, Crying in the Rain's a great too. So good pick. Uh where am I headed? I'm surprised you might not like this song. I feel like you do though, and I feel like it since we're talking harder rock stuff, another rainy night without you by Queen's Right. On my list. Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's a jam, dude. Yeah. I have gone back to Empire um, pretty heavy lately. Yes. It's, um, I've been I find myself going back to that more than mind crime lately. I know my buddy Ronnie has been on a mind crime kick. Um, I know that I can tell when like dudes I play with are on a kick or something because oh. <laughs> every time there's silence and practice, they'll be it's a riff, it's a riff. riff and I'm it. like, and then you got to stop and be like, is that, is that, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't believe in love or whatever, but. Speaking of that, playing stuff at practice, you've seen The Doors, Val Kilmer, right? No, I never watched it. Okay, well, 
at the beginning of the movie when they start getting the doors together, they're practicing at Ray's beach house. Okay. And they're they're trying to put together light my fire. Okay. Because song uh, played Robbie's in my got wedding. Some, Robbie's got some words. Jim adds some of his own stuff. Ray's trying to get the intro down. So, but while they're standing there, uh, Robbie starts playing um, "Wish You Were Here" on guitar. Oh, really? Which wasn't even out yet. Out yet. <laughs> See, so. <laughs> that there's your NMD coming out because that always <laughs> bugs me. Like, you know, so and so's playing this guitar, like Richie Valens is playing this guitar in La Bamba, and that, but that's a 62 strat, and it had, you know, that kind of shit. Or the always dirt be. when they're playing, um, like, oh, dude, a don't. Billy Squire tune that ain't out yet or something. You know, what else bothers me is, um, in the I think dirt. It wasn't a Billy Squire song that Vince was. It was singing and it wasn't even out yet i know he was singing like my kind of lover or something that doesn't yeah i think that's what it was and he was yeah. driving a corvette and not a pantera right. it was just yeah well and for me in the dirt mick is playing a bc rich and it's got the later weird looking headstock which bc rich hadn't had out I, yet i couldn't not see the dude from um game of thrones when i watched the dirt that played yes yeah, see, <laughs> see i've never seen that but uh I was too busy pointing out that the guitar headstock was so yeah. That's why people with an MD don't get to enjoy things like normal people get to. Uh, so yeah, mine was another rainy night without you by Queensrÿche off Empire, Empire, um, Operation Mindcrime. Those two albums, especially, I think established Queensrÿche as the you know I'll say the hard rock or heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, to me, they're they're that genre's Pink Floyd. Yeah, they're I just think they're a great groggy. band. I just love Queen's Rack. I do. Empire's such a good album. Um, Mind Crime is great. When I was a kid and I first heard, you know, Take Hold of the Flame. I mean, yeah. that rocked me for years. I had that video. I still do on a VHS that I taped off um, Night Flight or whatever it was. And um, and I remember the other song I like by Queen's Rack that no one really talks about is called The Lady Wore Black. Lady Wore Black and Queen of That's the Reich joke. and all, yeah, those. all that. Yeah. All that stuff. All right. What do you got next? I have a totally different world. Um, I'm going to, well, I don't have to. I'll go, no, to, go, I'll go, go to, to Pennsylvania. To a, That's a whole nother world. To a, to a hard rock band, which we all know what the Pennsylvania hard rock bands sound like. And these guys don't sound any different. They're called Silver Tide. Oh. Um, they have a song called California Rain, which is killer. It's... um. Walt Lafty is the singer in this band, and um, Nick Perry is the guitar player. He was Nicky Perry back then, um, but Nick Perry is in a band now called Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves. They're out in California now. Cool. But um, just a killer tune. It's, um, you know, hair metal-y. Which I love. if you're into hair metal, you know, like... Which I am. Which always bothered me. You remember when, you know, grunge came about and hair metal, everybody... A lot of people thought disappeared. Well, right. it never disappeared. If you it just wanted fell to seek out of vote. out, you could seek it out and find bands like Silver Tide and yeah, and I'm it, it was think, always around. I wonder what the last hair metal record I bought. Like you know, there when was, the era ended. Do you remember? Um, I think they were early two thousands. There was a band from Sweden or Finland or something called Veins of Jenna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the Gilby first. Clark real, produced some of it. They were like the first throwback that yeah. I remember when they came out. They had now, dude. Now there's a ton of bands. Yeah, who are like throwback glam rock bands from the That's 80s. Silver but Veins of Jenna, like Veins of Jenna were the first one I really saw that came out and were rocking the look and the style. And I mean, that was I remember reading about them on Metal Sludge. Yeah, they were killer. There. I got yeah. like two or three of their records. Yeah, they're bad. Yeah. Then throwback. So yeah, Silver Tide. They did um a few covers too. They did an awesome cover of Maggie's Farm. I love that song. Um, and they also did another one. I don't remember. Oh, uh, it ain't me, babe. No, oh, Dylan. Well, so you had Silver Tide. I'm gonna go on to a song by Bob Dylan called "A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall." Oh, from uh, is that from '66? The um. Yeah, what's it on? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Um, I mean, everybody's covered it. The Freewheel and Bob Dylan, is it from that I, one? That could be. That feels right to me. Um, This is 
Man, I, I mean, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard rain. Come fall. Yeah. Um, I've heard everybody. I think I've heard Joni Mitchell cover everybody, everybody. Um, I've heard I have a bootleg, a good Tupelo cover of it. Um, it's just a classic tune. It's so good, man. It's it's um, and it's true, man. A hard rain's gonna fall. I mean, that's just Dylan at his best. The musically, it's cool. It's it, it's weird and and Dylan-y. You know, he's super Dylan on it, and mm-hmm. I like that. And and I love all the covers of it. And I've never covered it myself, but I think I'd like to. And yeah, a hard rain's gonna fall by Bob Dylan. What do you got next? I have from the Randy Rogers band from Texas. They have a song called Damn the Rain. I think it's from like 2011. Um, They've come up on our show before. Or yeah, that artist a, has. I've I love that Randy. You, you um, say that name. His This song is about his, uh, his lady left. She loved the rain. She loved to go out in the rain and dance around in the rain. And he's got a line in the song. She left me. What is it? Um. It came down in buckets the summer she left me. Damn the rain for making me remember. I still love her too much to ever curse her name. So damn the rain. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty good. That's a killer tune. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's but yeah, good. Randy's awesome. I he's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, him and Cody Canada are good friends, and they've done some. St- I think Chris Knight is buddies with Randy too. Okay. Um. But yeah, him and Wade Bowen are friends too. They they've done some records together, Randy Rogers and Wade Bowen. Uh they do this thing called Hold My Beer. And they've got okay. like two or three of those. But yeah. Cool. Randy Rogers is uh I know I that mean, name's he's been on the show before. Phenomenal uh Texas country guy. Probably I don't know. I don't keep track, but I'd have to guess he's one of the bigger ones, but you know, doesn't really I've seen him here. Him and him and Wade in Grand Rapids, and I've seen him in Chicago, but uh, it's yeah, they don't really have to leave Texas. I mean, yeah, right. Texas, you wouldn't Oklahoma, have, you could, Louisiana. Yeah. It's a lot. You're a set. lot of those guys just do that circuit. I don't think the Turnpike Troubadours get out of that area a ton. I mean, they tour the nation, obviously, but you know, I think they some of them. You can, yeah, they just hit like Joe's on weed, you know, in Chicago, right. and that's yep. as far this north that they do. <laughs> Yeah, and I get that. I totally get that. Uh, let's see. Where am I at? Let's see how wacky I want to be. Um, you know what? This is the song I told you. It's on my list, and it's not something I would listen to constantly, but I really, really like it. And I also think it was kind of a lot of people's introduction to this sort of genre, which I'll call, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call industrial. Um, but it's uh, I'm Only Happy When It Rains by Garbage. Oh, Yes. I think that's a. I just rewatch like rewatched the video, and I I have had a you know Shirley Manson crush in my day because she was so tough and you know it never did anything for me that band. Uh, I know a lot of people liked them, but I never went along. Well, and I I did on the singles. I'm I'm not you know it's not like I'm following them around the country or anything, but I just liked that they were able to. They had that. I don't think they had a bass player, dude. I don't think they had a bass player, mm. um, but it was Butch Vig on the drums and, you know, obviously a legend. And all those guys were studio guys and pro- early Pro Tools guys who were really hip on that. And they I mean, they took that hard. Pokey kind of sound and still made made it accessible. I mean, that that tune and what a uh, stupid girl, yep. and you know, so I like that one. I And, and it was a good more current rain song um i thought for me that's what current is right yeah. what was that 90s 2000 2000s i guess um Probably, yeah yeah late 90s early 2000s. late 90s i'd say yeah what do you got next i have from radney foster raining on sunday um see i almost had a song called it rained on sunday from the backsliders oh okay i'm always I was just listening to them the other day i'm always glad to hear radney foster's name come up because he doesn't get his props well it's from I think he I think this record Excuse came me. out in the late 90s. Um uh, he wrote it with Daryl Brown who wrote with, you know, Bon Jovi and Stevie Nicks and um he actually went this I think the story I heard was Radney was going to Daryl Brown's house to write they were going to write together and it was pouring rain and it was Sunday and he like was holding his rain 
his um jean jacket over his head and he was singing it's raining on sunday as he was walking in and he's like that's really good let's sit down with that uh, let's write that well wow, cool. <laughs> <laughs> i say random but stuff he does it time. um on his i don't know if it's his latest record but it's a uh, latest one i have it's from like 2018 um randy foster put out a record called for you to see the stars and he do- he redoes that on there Radney was a, I mean, he was, you know, I'll say this, Radney, a little tiny bit, like his look bothered me. You know, I'm, I'm hung up. Because he looks like cool as shit. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Back then, like I, I wanted my, I guess. I, I thought wanted, he looked I, cool with the glasses and the. It was his own thing. It was his yeah. own thing. And he, he made it work, obviously. Um. But that uh, the Del Rio era of that band and him and the that was killer. But with that Foster just, and Lloyd before that, yeah, yeah, who were all part of that uh, great credibility scare that we sometimes talk about. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Radney Foster plus Radney Foster would always he would have me on two songs anyhow, a fine line, and um, went for a ride. Those are my two favorite Radney Foster tunes. All right, let's move on to my list. Uh, some more rain. Let's let it rain. You know what I didn't put on my list? When Will It Rain by Jackal, but I like that song, too. Oh, Have you ever yeah. heard that song? When yeah. Will It Rain. I'll From the be... first yeah. record, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But my, you know, my NMD ego wouldn't let me put it. No, I don't listen to it that much. That's why. Um, This song, however, I would, uh, I will always um, mention and, and uh, be proud of, and it's Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Oh, man. My, I mean, timeless, timeless song, beautiful song. Um, and it's, it's some of Willie Nelson's most Willie esque Willying of all time. Yeah. Cause, you know, boom, eyes crying and the rain. All right. I mean, his weird ass phrasing. And my son and I, of course, I've told you, we listen to a lot of that genre of music together and, you know, argue about who's going to be Willie and who can out Willie Willie because we're both. In the car, we really lay it on thick, man. We are very, very willied out. You know, anytime you get to, you know, take take Willie's verse and something, we overdo it all the time. But Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain is that, I don't know, man. And I've heard this said, and, and I think it's true, that Willie Nelson is a jazz singer. Like, the, and, and if you listen to the way he plays guitar, too, it is way outside. There's his... Melody. I mean, yeah, that's what he grew you know, up listening to. It was well, a lot the, of that stuff. It's the way he does it too. Like I, I know I've told the story before that Waylon always said, you know, oh, everybody says, you know, Willie's got great phrasing, and I just say he's got shitty tempo or something like that. And, <laughs> but um, but it's really beautiful. If you want a good example of it too, um, he sings a verse on "So You Want to Be an Outlaw" by Steve Earle, newer Steve Earle song. Yeah, and the way he delivers it when I first heard it, I'm like, God, you know, it, it doesn't follow the melody. Right. It's really weird. And now I, I, I've grown to love it. It's like his, he, he's a vocal stylist for sure. He, nobody sounds like Willie Nelson. We all try it. Everybody's got anyone who listens to that genre, I think has some version of Willie Nelson. They do. Yeah, Like does. I've got um, mine, of course. There's a, another a good example of Willie's sounding off, but it, works and sounds awesome is um he's on a song called the honky tonk kid with this texas guy named aaron watson and well, that's just killer he, willie's pretty open i mean he'll he'll guest on your jam i mean oh if yeah you think he, if he thinks you're cool he'll show up i mean i love what he does and i'm not a huge boy i'm gonna say something that's really gonna come bite me in the ass this is gonna be this is probably <laughs> be the end of everything for me especially here where i live and where we live I'm not a huge Billy Strings fan. I mean, I like him, um, but I'm oh, not. No. Couldn't, I'm not. Never heard a song. I'm not falling over myself or anything. But he's got a song called "California Sober" that he does with Willie Nelson, mm. and it's really cool. I've, it's cool. I've never heard a song from Billy. Strings. Yeah, I mean, he's he's great. He's he's certainly. I don't know if the, it's in dude, my. It's bluegrass, right? It's blue. It's new okay, grass. So I'm not bluegrassy. It's new grass. Um, my only thing is. Dude, it's like it's we were Greg and I were talking about it on Friday. Dude, 
nobody there are no kids more kids want a mandolin now than an electric that's cool guitar. though yeah it's very cool but god man there's one and i don't mean any disrespect because you know i have tons of friends who play bluegrass i love bluegrass i'm nobody loves the Leuven brothers more than i do um i i love it but but there's something about plugging an electric guitar into an amp and letting it move your pant legs that is inherently tied to puberty. Like when that happens, yeah. when you get your first big amp, I remember Rob Hartman lending me my first 212 Renown PV combo. And my mom went to the store and it was a summer day and I opened the windows, you know, so the neighbors yeah. could hear me Yeah, and, and busted it out. And it was like, Oh man, that it, it connects you in a way that I don't know. I don't know that mandolin necessarily, but I, I, think- I could be wrong, you know. I think I went from my little 15 watt practice amp to a hundred watt fender. That is game changer. <laughs> Feels so good. It's there's something. I'm an old man, and it's still. I still get a tingle like we're climbing the rope in gym class when I oh. hear the amp move my pant legs. So, all right, what do you got next? My final one from the Jesus and Mary chain. Only happy when it rains from their greatest album called Darklands. There's another one of those bands. I don't care. That is another band like the Jesus and Mary chain live in this place in my mind with Echo and the Bunny Man. All those bands, everybody loves. They they are. They're they're emo goth. I've never heard them. I've never. It's emo goth. I don't know if I like that. I feel like I would. It's dark land. Everybody likes. Everybody wants uh, Psycho Candy. The record from like, I think, 87. Okay. But Psycho Candy, like like you've said about certain records, certain artists like Dinosaur Jr., you've said it too noisy. Psycho yeah. Candy's too noisy for me. Yeah. Um, and that's I think I think that Dark noisiness is, pop, is supposed to be is cool. like um is poppier and I mean it's still that emo goth feel to it, but it's arguably got their best song, April Skies, or I like Happy When It Rains, but it's I don't know, man. Dude, would you say that um that early cult, like I'm talking oh my god, dude. Why don't I have rain by the cult but, yeah. on my list? I don't have it. That's a record, right? Didn't they have a record called Rain also? I don't know what the title was. It of love? Album was. That's yeah. off love. The song yeah. is rain, yeah. Yeah, okay. Here comes rain. Here yeah. comes. But that cool. I don't know what that but are those, would you say early cult is emo goth like that? Yeah, it's that new that romantic. Style, that, I called it back then. Right. The new romantic. Um, Which I liked in the, I like that whole thing. I like the, what, you know, I like the guys... poofy white shirts. I like yeah. a good bolo tie type thing. They were big on that. I love, I love that whole thing. I like that look. I mean, yeah, a lot they're... of the bands I loved, my hair metal bands, if they were super cool, like super cool hair bands, they copped a little of that. Bang Tango could have been right out when the cult were doing that. They had that same look velvety jacket. Yep. De- you know who else who a friend of ours, Denny Smith had some of that back in his day. He had a little velvety jacket. Yeah. With the Gothi. bombshell crush day. Yeah. Which probably. I like. Yeah. That's a great look. I just bought that record. Yeah. They, did they just re-release it? Or... Yeah. It's like yeah. 17. There's, there's the first version of it. I think with, uh, I don't remember what the cover Which is. Which I have. The other one has the famous, uh, you know, red bikini cover from yeah. Fast Times. From Fast <laughs> Times, yeah. Which is killer. So I'm sorry, you had Jesus and Mary Chain. That was your last one. Yep, Scottish emo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've got two more somehow. Um. So I'm going to throw this one out here, and I don't know if you'll like this or not either. But it's a, uh, uh, here comes the rain again by the Arrhythmics. Or Arrhythmics. I don't think it's the... Do you know the song I'm talking about? Here comes the rain again Falling think, on my yeah. head yep. like a memory Yep, yep. Um, Here it comes again Is that from the famous record? Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. It was the I probably the second single. Did that Did that record have Missionary Man on it too? Yeah, I dude, don't quote me because I, I'm not some, you know, scholar in yeah. Arrhythmics records. But there was that, it was kind of like Sweet Dreams. Yep. And then I think Here Comes the Rain Again, Missionary Man. 
uh, uh, what's the song? Walk up, yeah, walk there, up. Had to be another one. Yes, they had one that had a ah. Oh, that sucks. Catch me walking, walking out the door. Dun. Had horns in it. Anyhow, God, that sucks. This is the was the really broody, moody. Here comes the rain again. And it was just killer. It, it's such a great song. I still like it. I recently heard Sweet Dreams. Um, and uh, I who's forgot that how girl? That oh. There was definitely a song called Who's That Girl? Yeah. But the one I'm thinking of is Love is a Stranger. One. This had a, a I swear it had it had that kind of I'll catch me walking, walking out the diet. Anyhow, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And it might be one of those songs whose title, you know, the chorus doesn't remind me of or whatever. <laughs> so I had that. And then my final one that I feel is is great. But a, a, a iconic song is Purple Rain. Yeah. Prince and the Revolution, which they've they come up all the time for me. You know that. But if you just take I mean, I've always I always connect Purple Rain to the movie, obviously. And I, in my head, I know I know it, it wasn't written this way or anything or, you know, because the movie is stylized and fictionalized, whatever you want to say. But in the movie, you know, it's Wendy and Lisa's demo where they they're playing the chords to Purple Rain. It's Purple mm. Rain. And Prince is like, you know fuck your songs and you know there's he has a blow up you know because he's so brooding and under stress and complicated and all that and he kind of blows their song off and then he comes to like they go to the gig which again I don't know if the movie's kind of gaps where it's like did Wendy and Lisa teach the revolution that and then Prince comes and starts the chords and then the whole band knows it I don't know how that works but Prince shows up at you know First Avenue and plays, you know, he'd been fighting with Wendy and Lisa. Everybody's going to quit the band because Prince is such a dick and all this. And he's so hurt and brooding and he's Apollonia and all this. And they play Purple Rain. And one of the best moments of that whole movie to me is they're playing Purple Rain on stage. Wendy's song. And he goes over to Wendy and he kisses her on the cheek during the song. It's just the coolest thing. And the other like the thing. Music we brought him back together. Like, yeah, of course it did, Scott. Of like course in, it um, did. like when they sing Tiny Dancer on, um, it, the, it, on Almost Famous. Almost right. Famous, yeah. <laughs> right, right. It brings them all back together. Everybody got, never, all, all, that's what I'm going to start doing when I'm feuding with someone. I'm just going to oh, be like, Blue Jean, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and my luck, you know, some dude punched me in the face during it. <laughs> Shut up, Mercha, you stupid <laughs> Tiny Dancer. Nobody wants to have a moment with you. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so that that purple and the other thing I got to say about Purple Rain, um, I just watched a breakdown of it is the guitar tone, that clean guitar tone that starts Purple Rain. There to this day, there'll be myself, other people when we're looking for that chorusy, clean guitar sound. You, I will literally play the intro to Purple Rain to see if, oh yeah, that, I kind of got it. You know, I have these songs that are in my head when, like my chorusy guitar sound. I'm going to play a little bit of message in a bottle. I'll play a little bit of purple rain. I'll play a little back on the chain gang to make sure I'm, I have my chorus tone down. That's what right. I'm looking for. Any chorus pedal I play through. I'm like, well, let's play those songs and see if that lives in there. If that lives in there. Everything I need lives in that chorus. So there you go. Musician people, real musicians will probably comment and be like, who could virtue? This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You don't know anything about <laughs> chorus. You don't know nothing about no chorus. So, you have any honorable mentions? I, I had um, "Save It for a Rainy Day" by the Jayhawks. Dude, that's one of my favorite Jayhawks tunes. I'm a moron. That should be on my list. My kid used to request that when we when he was little. Play the that's a great hairdo tune. song. <laughs> pretty little hairdo. Yep. I cover that. Love that song. I'm gonna uh, play it Friday night for you. I had uh, uh, "Ballet for a Rainy Day" by XTC. Oh yeah. I list. have. I love a rainy night. Yeah. By Eddie Rabbit, don't judge me. I mean, I don't, wish it would rain by dismiss the dismiss me. But it's really not about rain. Yeah. He's wishing it would rain. What else did I have? There was another tune I was thinking of. I mean, I had a... Traffic um, an, Colored Rain is on my list. I had another rainy night in Georgia. 
Um, yeah, I think that's it. There's that's about. I mean, South, so doesn't many. the REM have a South Central rain? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know what else I don't have is uh, the Dylan Rainy Day Women, twelve and oh, thirty six. Yeah. But there's nothing about rain in that song well, unless yeah, you're the... getting high in the rain. <laughs> Which is going to be my next rain song. It's going to just be called Getting High in the Rain. That's going to be my jam. <laughs> and it'll be all be about some dude who can't get high in the rain because he can't light up. That'll be the thing. The rain keeps putting out the lighter. It's a whole thing. I, I've got it written. I'll have a verse and chorus here shortly. Um. So that's it for the rain. Um. Do you think it's too trod upon? You think there's it's too cliche? No. No, not and... when it's done right. When it's done right, um, it's great. And I was listening to something. That, this isn't about rain, but this is kind of ties in. I was listening to an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience the other day, and he was talking to a dude about artificial intelligence. And they were talking about how, you know, AI can do this art. And, you know, they put yeah. all these the artists songs and they can write new songs and he was saying, like, when AI replaces human intelligence or surpasses human intelligence, it'll be a better world. And Joe Rogan said, there won't be any more sad songs, though. Right, right, right. right. And I was like, wow. That's yeah. true. That's what really if... well, because that emotion is purely human, right? I yeah. mean, not purely human, I'm sure, but sadness is yeah wow wow joe rogan what we wouldn't be here if it weren't for sad songs that's what well, all i care about in music i dude as much as i love pour some sugar on me and yeah you know and we will rock you or whatever you know big and there's just something dude there's just it's sadness is i don't know for some reason i think sadness is easier to convey than happiness because we don't always know what makes everyone happy. Right. But you kind of, you know, the emotional feeling of sadness is pretty universal. Yeah. You know, whatever you're sad about, because some people, when they're happy, jump up and down and scream and carry on. And then other people, you know, you're going, are, are you okay? Are you digging this? Oh yeah. I like it a lot. Well, you know, but sadness is, you can almost always tell when someone's sad. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's well put. Wow, Joe Rogan. <laughs> that's really, that's good. When I just said, Joe, wow, Joe Rogan, I said it in the voice from Chappelle's show when, um, <laughs> what's his name is on Fear Factor. I'm going to eat that, Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, the uh, Chappelle's character that he played. <laughs> yeah, that was Tyro, Tyro, yeah. Tyro Biggin. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got any parting words for us, my friend? And that's why I'm only happy when it rains. I'm happy when it pours. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you next time, everybody. Thank you.